As you know, Mr. R. or Paul Richardson recently passed away, and we wanted to do a memorial tribute to him. So I went through all my thousands of slides, and I tried to dig out some that pertain to um, Paul Richardson and the, our early troop. Um, our history actually goes back to PAC 515 that was sponsored out of St. Monica's Church off of Mishawaka Avenue in Mishawaka. And um, Paul Richardson's son, Lee, uh, joined the Cub Pack, and Paul became involved with the leadership. And as um, his son, Lee, got older and was approaching the time he would be able to graduate into the scout troop, uh, Paul became more and more interested in, in the scouts end of it. And that was Troop 515, also out of St. Monica's. But as he was observing the troop, he thought that um, things could be better. And he wanted to have <laughs> the best possible troop experience or scouting experience for his son Lee. So he, became, he began to take um, the leadership training for the scout, um, scoutmaster's job. And that was one of the first things he, he did. He started through the training. And um, they more or less coerced <laughs> the present scoutmaster to resign. And Paul took over the leadership as scoutmaster. He did meet with some resistance from the parents and the boys. But uh, he wanted to change the direction of the troop. And that's what he did. Uh, one of the first things he did, if I can figure out what it is. With it. Um, he bought the Scoutmaster's Handbook, which was being used at that time, and this is a copy of the Scoutmaster's Handbook. He always used to say this was the best Scoutmaster's Handbook that they ever printed. So this was kind of his vital. But this was back in 1970, I believe. And he wanted to take all of the training he could get before he actually took over the troop. So, he also took the wood badge training, which is the highest adult leader training there is, and they have these beads when you go through and finish the course, they give you these beads. And that's for the wood badge program. <coughs> Many scout masters don't take the wood badge training until much later in their scouting experience, but he took it right away, because he knew he was going to face a challenge in getting the troop uh, kind of in a better direction. Um, he wanted to institute um, boy leadership in the patrol method. And the kinds of things that he got started back then when he first started as a, as a scoutmaster um, became traditions. <coughs> and that's the way we run the, the troop today. Um, I first met Paul Richardson in 1971, I was serving as a camp commissioner up at Camp Tamarack on the camp staff. So I saw pretty much all of the troops that came to camp. And I saw all kinds of different troop operations. But I was impressed with Troop 515 right from the start because it was evident that they were using good boy leadership. The, the youth actually run the troop. And Paul, as scoutmaster, was there pretty much as an advisor. And he, he told me early on that, um, you know, he was a World War II veteran. He served as an infantry soldier in Germany. And he told me early on that after he got out of the Army, he never wanted to sleep on the ground again. <laughs> but, of course, as he became scoutmaster, he was doing a lot of sleeping on the ground, see, on the ground. They started out uh, camping once a month, year-round, and we still do that. Um, so it became a very good camping troop. Another thing that um, also, when he took the wood badge course, his course director was a man named, um, oh man, <laughs> I, can't, uh, I can't think of his name now, but he was a council commissioner at the time, 
And he was very much in the good old time scouting with the pioneering and outdoor skills and all of that. So that was kind of the kind of wood badge course that, that Paul experienced. That's a week long course, you know. So he got those things started right away. And uh, this in the troop. Now this I believe is on a well it's on a camp out. You see Paul um, Kenny Burnt is right beside him, and uh, Kevin Lockwood is standing there in the uh, campaign hat. Um, Kevin Lockwood was one of our senior patrol leaders eventually. Kenny came in the troop as a young scout, and he was always very faithful to the troop. He didn't uh, earn the Eagle rank, but he was a very skillful camper, and he still helps the troop. Um, today. He became a heavy equipment operator, worked out at Knollwood, and whenever we needed a large trailer or something, he was able to get us a large trailer with the whole towers and things like that. <laughs> so he's just one of the resources, and he's still a resource for the troop, as far as I know. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <coughs> this is a, um, I believe it was at a camporee out of ZB Falcons. And you can see Paul standing there on the left. Um, Kevin Lockwood, I think, is the young scout in the campaign hat. And actually, the kid in the scout uniform kneeling down right beside Kevin is, is Brad Buter. Now, Brad went on, that's an early picture of Brad. He became our first Eagle Scout. Um, he was very active in the troop attended a number of high adventures and things like that. Okay, let's go on. There's Mr. R talking, crossing the log. This is just some of the kids. I think it was on a canoe trip. Um, this is um, a father and son camp out. The man standing there in the blue shirt is Bob Buter. Uh, he was very active, helped with the troop a lot. He became mayor of Mishawaka. This was before he became mayor and served several terms as mayor of Mishawaka, but um, he and his family were always very supportive. There's Mr. Art crossing a, a log. Okay, let's go. Might as well go around. Okay. You can move on. <laughs> we already saw. Now there's Mr. Art uh, helping to carry one of the patrol boxes. On a winter camp out. I think that was up at Wood Lake. We used to do some camping at Wood Lake and there was happened to be a lot of snow on the ground at that time. Okay. Uh, there's Paul in a canoe trip. I think the man in the back was a, I think his name was Ray Bickle. And uh, he used to help us with the troop. I think he was a committee member. I don't think he had a, uh, some of the troop. Uh, Paul used to go on canoe trips. <laughs> I used to be his um, partner in a lot of, and he was a bit challenging to paddle with. <laughs> I have to admit, <laughs> for one thing, the person in the back should be the heavier person, because so, you want the weight kind of towards the back of the canoe. And Paul was relatively, well, he was heavier than me, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit difficult doing the steering and stuff sometimes. But he used to go on the trips until he got a little older, and one time he fell into the water. He's trying to cross a log, I think, so he gave up on going on canoe trips. Okay, let's. Uh, this is another one of Paul with Rebickle, and the kid in the front was Mike Porter. And yeah. he was a senior <laughs> patrol leader. He's kind of acting like he's resting there, but he's really trying to avoid me taking a picture of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How do we get back to that? Oh, well, go on. <laughs> this was on a raft, raft rally trip. Um, that may have been on the Fawn River, actually. We used to do some trips on the phone Okay. And there's another canoe. Oh, we used to do their canoe trips in April because the scout show or scout was in May 
and we used to do the Scalarama, the district Scalarama a lot. So we ended up doing our canoe trips in April, and they were pretty cold. You see the leaves have not blossomed out on the trees much. Okay. This was a winter camp out, not sure, I think that might have been at Tamarack. And, uh, actually, the young man on the far right is Lee Richardson, that's Paul's oldest son. And you can see Paul behind the kid <laughs> in the red hat. And, okay. Uh, there's another one with uh, Paul. I think we were doing a little hiking, hiking trip in the winter. And uh, Kenny Burke is standing right beside him. Okay. Uh, this is on a winter camp out. I believe it was at a place we called Sherwood Forest. And I, that may have been our the blizzard camp out we were on one time. <laughs> um, we kind of got snowed in. I don't know if I want to take the time to tell that story. But we've been out in all kinds of weather. Paul's been with us all the time in that kind of weather. Um, the kid in the front with the green hat, that's Ora Lane. He was the first patrol leader of the Raccoon Patrol. In fact, he originated the Raccoon Patrol. Now that patrol didn't last. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, this was up at summer camp when we used to camp on the south side of the lake. The trailer you see belongs to the camp. They used to let us drive in, but um, eventually had a problem with that because we had run the Brown Sea course like a week or so before and there was a big rainstorm come up and we got a truck stuck and made some big ruts. And so then they told us that we couldn't drive back there ourselves, so they had the um, camp ranger haul all of our gear back with a trailer. And Paul wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> uh, but we eventually got it worked out. And, um, okay, let's go. Uh, there's Paul Richardson with a young staff member named Jeff Golding. Who is very, Jeff Golding is an attorney. I believe he's up in the Belfries area now. Okay. And there's Paul. This was <laughs> at the summer camp on the south side of Wood Lake in what we called our staff site back then. Okay. Cool. Oh, uh, that's one of the patrols on the south side of Wood Lake. And we put up this big flag display. Actually, I think that was Paul's idea. Um, put up this big flag display right down at the corner of Wood Lake. If you go down to Wood Lake and you look over to your um, up on the south side, on the left-hand side, is where we used to have that big flag display that was visible all the way across the lake. So it was pretty impressive. Okay. Um, this was our zip line out into the lake <laughs> that we did at one time. Another thing, Paul always encouraged the kids to be creative. Now, I don't know exactly how we came up with that idea. You know, one of us adults may have initially came up with it, but it was the kids who built it. So this is a zip line that went out into Wood Lake. You can see Paul in the white shirt over there. Okay. And this is another creative idea where they build a tower actually in the lake, inverted V tower. Okay. They did that for Pioneering Mare Badge. Okay. Um, they also put kind of a, um, a bridge from the tower to the shore. It wasn't very far offshore, but... Okay. And um, as I... I mentioned a little bit about Brown Sea. This is a picture of our Brown Sea staff. I don't know what year it is. You can see Paul kneeling over there on the left, and I'm standing over there. I mean on the, uh, well, depending on it. He's kneeling. In the front row. I'm standing over on the other side. And you're brown there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little more brown back then. I think it's around 1990. Okay. Well, Wasn't it always gray? 
<laughs> no. Anyhow, not until you guys came along. Back in um, 19, well, Paul went through the wood badge training, and after he went through the wood badge training, uh, they challenged the course participants to go back home and use their training to help the kids in the council and in their home units. So one of the things that they decided to do was form a youth leader training program, which they decided to call the Brown Sea Adventure Program. Paul was one of the founding members of the Brown Sea Training Program. And we ran that program. I came on the staff or the committee for that. I think it was the second year, but Paul was an original founder. So we ran it for 13 years altogether. And Paul was the chairman of the Brown Sea Committee for several of those years. Um, Lee Richardson, I mean, um, uh, well, Lee was, he was an SPL, right? Probably back in. Yeah, back I think uh, Lee Richardson was, was a senior patrol leader. Were you a senior patrol leader? And then when I was in the three years that I, when they re-ran the program later, I was a youth and then an adult over those three years, so I was an assistant. Assistant Senior Patrol Leader, Senior Patrol Leader, then Assistant Scout Master. Okay. <laughs> so our troop has had a lot of involvement with the Brown Sea Program. This is uh, some of the uh, course participants along with the staff, our Brown Sea staff down in front. And I think it was at uh, Topanibi, Camp Topanibi. Okay. Another Brown Sea staff picture. <clears throat> when we run that program, um, the Brown Sea staff and the Brown Sea training patrols do a lot of the kinds of things that our kids do even today. You know, with the, the pioneering, the uh, outdoor skills, and all of that. Okay, is that another you can go ahead and Okay, that's <laughs> first, of, first of all, I'll comment yeah. one more thing about the Brown Sea program. We trained a total of 661 scouts for the council, and we had a, a total staff of around 100 that served on the courses. So it was a pretty big program back then. But this is a, that was a picture of young Tim, and I'm not sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which one? Well, no, this, on the left. this one shows the Paul left the and then Gene. I'm not sure that, who that is. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing. They might be Sweet. making some kind of a, uh, do you remember uh, Mr. Peeper's sketch? A, a uh, prop for a skiff. That looks like okay, a cage made. for the oh, skiff. Oh, this is the one that was just a few years ago? No, this was uh, <laughs> not a skiff. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you can go on. <coughs> And that's another picture of Gene. Gene was always very talented with the woodworking and stuff. And he always pitched in and helped out. And he grew into it. There's another picture of young Tim <laughs> on a raft. Is that Johnny Miller? Yes. Okay. Johnny Miller is born with you. Okay. And there's... Uh, Gene and Bryce Cohn. <laughs> Bryce Cohn has the blue shirt. Well, the white gloves on. He's the doctor. Uh, yeah. He's the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just press it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> There's Gene on uh, one of our early uh, repelling things. Okay. Uh, this is a seen looking from the south side of Wood Lake towards the north side, kind of um, at dusk. That's one of my favorite ones. There's, you can see the go flash. ahead to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to close with a home that we use for our um, induction ceremonies that Paul picked out. Probably found it in the scouting literature someplace, maybe a scouting magazine or something. But I think it reflects how he felt about his job as a scoutmaster. The poem was written, <coughs> the poem is called A Scoutmaster's Prayer. 
It was written during World War II on a night preceding <coughs> the Koshar Dancer's Christmas Party. It was written by Buck Bershears. He learned the night before that one of his Koshars was missing in action. He was a scoutmaster of Troop 232 in La Junta, Colorado from 1933 until his death in 1987. He also founded the Koshar Indian Museum and was the leader of the Koshar Indian Dancers. To be a full-fledged member of the Koshar Dancers, a scout must earn the rank of eagle. And this is the poem. A little boy came knocking at my scout room door, an awfully little fellow, just twelve no more. His eyes danced as he watched my gang at Rowdy play. I would be a scout, he said, I'm twelve just yesterday. In the weeks to come he found his place, a trim young scout he made. The test he passed, with eagerness, a thorough job sure paid. The oath, the laws, the knots, and flag were taken to his heart. A better man he was sure to be, though we'd just begun to start. By candlelight of darkness, I watched his round face beam, as the oath the law he pledged to keep, just like a prayer it seemed. The years to come were happy ones, as we followed the trail that greater men had laid for us far up the eagle where eagles sail. I watched him grow from boy to, to man, <clears throat> The days were far too few to try to teach the important things that scouting said were true. I didn't know so long ago our nation he would defend. I only saw a job to do, a helping hand to lend. Now he's flying higher still with silver wings up there. I pray to God the job I did was better than just fair. He thanked me once for what I did so many years ago. It was not his thanks that paid me because he did not know. The greater thanks he'd given me a thousand times before. By his dancing eyes and smiling face, could one ask for more? There are other boys a knocking. I must invite them in. Please God give me the strength to make them better men. Well, I think Paul's scouting history and experience shows that he made many boys better men. Thank you. Thank you.